Hello, everyone. Um, everyone's so smooth talking. I'm like just not that. So I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm gonna go and be myself. But um, my name is Yulene. I'm actually the uh, New York State Assembly member that represents Lower Manhattan, and that encompasses the Chinatown of uh, New York City, the oldest Chinatown, but also um, uh, one that was hit very very hard during this. Um, this pandemic um, because of xenophobia and racism. And I just want to thank all of the folks who came out to speak um, about this amazing program introduced by Beyond Differences and CY CYC. Uh, currently in New York, I am in the New York State Legislature, the only Asian American woman. Um, and I'm also the only Asian American person to hold my assembly seat, even though Chinatown is part of the district. Um, I am only one of four Asian American elected officials in the entire New York State Legislature. Uh, Asian Americans, even though we uh, <laughs> are very comparable in, um, you know, California's population of Asian Americans, we have we have like more than 13% of our state's population uh, Asian American, and yet we have less than. 2% uh, of the representation. So it's a pretty significant, uh, you know, pretty significant thing to say that we need more representation here because when we don't have that representation at the table, it also makes it so, oh, but little known fact, um, Asian Americans were never even once mentioned in our state's budget until I was elected. <laughs> so, um, you know, these are the things that start to take away from our communities, right? Lack of language access, lack of, tra lack of transparency, lack of um, accessibility. And I think that, uh, you know, having, um, you know, this amazing uh, group of young people stand up for AAPI youth program. It's an essential uh, step in bridging that divide uh, through accessible and necessary education. And I think that folks don't understand that, um, you know, it's so important to have these diverse uh, perspectives uh, at every table. And so to be able to make change, we need to have knowledge behind why something is happening and stand up gives teachers the resources and accessibility that they need to bring this knowledge um, to their classroom. And I just want to say thank you to um, the mayor who spoke earlier, uh, because, you know, what she was saying was so, so true, so true, because um, Asian Americans underreport a lot, all the time. And so a lot of the, uh, you know, the targeted crimes that are happening to Asian Americans uh, goes unreported and um, undocumented. And so it's necessary for us to be able to have those clear or difficult conversations within our community. I think it's necessary to understand things like the model minority myth, which is very, very present um, in my district and uh, and also in the lesson plan for stand up. And so I think that, you know, even though Asian Americans have been marginalized, erased from our history, American history, um, throughout history, and oftentimes unfairly persecuted, for example, um, as David was mentioning with the Chinese Exclusion Act and Japanese internment camps in World War II, while Asian Americans um, settled in different areas around the country, um, like Chinatown in my district, and we made our home a vibrant and cultural center in many different uh, cities, um, there's still a major lack of these necessary resources, social services, and accessibility for our community. Um, and because of you know, the model minority myth, it is often perceived that Asian Americans in general are overall successful, right? Um, and, but in reality, I want to just put this out there, in New York City, one in four Asian Americans lives in poverty. We are in fact, the, have the highest rate of poverty in any racial or ethnic group. Let that sink in. And that misconception um, that is driven by this stereotype means that Asian Americans are overlooked when it comes to resources aggregated data that puts Asian Americans as one group, one monolithic group, prevents the resources needed in our specific AAPI communities from being addressed or distributed. It also prevents language access, which is so key to even accessing these basic resources. Having these sorts of lessons taught in the stand-up program means that our young people can be aware of these stereotypes and work to change them as they are making their way in the world. And I just want to thank all of you for working on this because it is so critical. And I want to thank Hudson. I want to thank all of these young people who have spoken up because it is it is um, part of my own personal story that I was bullied in school. So a lot of folks um, think that it is so, um, so simple uh, that I live in New York City, that it's so diverse, et cetera. But I actually grew up in El Paso, Texas. Um, my parents, when they first moved to America, when they first immigrated here, they actually, um, you know, picked out of all the cities in the world, Moscow, Idaho <laughs> to move to. And so it was just like, there's there's uh, significant cultural shifts, cultural differences. And, um, you know, I, when I was in the classroom, uh, I still remember 
um, there was this one girl and she just, told, I, I grew up thinking I was very ugly, that I um, had strange hair, small eyes, big mouth, and that I was, um, you know, just a lot of bad things, right? And so she pulled me into the coat closet. This is in first grade. Remember, we are like seven years old. She pulled me into the coat closet and um, had all of my classmates take turns spitting on me. And then, um, you know, she threw my lunchbox into the boys' bathroom once and um, then set the trash can on fire and then tried to set me on fire um, and then set off the school alarm and, um, and uh, I peed myself in a bathroom. Um, because, you know, these are things that uh, happen to children uh, and it's taught to them, right? It's not something that, uh, you know, they just are born with, it's, it's taught to them. And so we can teach differently and we can teach each other. And I think that this is something that is so uh, amazing. And I just wanna say that it's so incredible that these are the young people who are stepping up and doing this change. And that way nobody ever has to go through that again. So thank you so much to all of your bravery. Thank you so much to all the things that you are um, doing. And I just wanted to introduce somebody who really helped me um, as a young person in Washington state where I was actually a legislative intern for the first time. Um, my mom, as I call her, Sharon Tomiko Santos, who's a representative, one of the first um, Asian American state representatives ever, um, her, her leadership, was one that I looked up to as a young person. And um, her mentorship is one that helped me to thrive. Um, this is a person who uh, I can't speak highly enough of because when I first went for my very first interview, and this is why mentorship is so important, she was willing to sit with me and talk me through my resume, go line by line through it. We ate steak and ketchup, I still remember. <laughs> and she, at the end of it, asked me, um, you know, what are you gonna wear? <laughs> and I, of course, as somebody who was very low income, um, didn't have much to wear. And so she went into her own closet and pulled out clothes for me to wear. So this is my mom, Sharon Tomiko Santos, representative in Washington State. Oh, thank you. You know how proud I am of 